Well, hey everyone, welcome to my next video. So the autumn weather is upon us, beginning of September. Soon the leaves are all gonna be changing and you're gonna be taking to the trails and back roads to do your hikes, your scenery, uh, leaf peeping, maybe a few cookouts. So today I wanna to talk about what makes a successful day out on the trail. Now, I've got a lot of stuff with me today I'm gonna to talk about. However, if you are just going out with your family and your kids and you're gonna be hiking like maybe to a waterfall or do some leaf peeping and your average uh, trip on the trail is gonna be like a mile or less round trip, a lot of the stuff I'm gonna be talking about today does not apply. Um, but there are some basics you should have with you. A lot of stuff I'm gonna be talking about today are gonna be for those who actually go out to do a day hike, uh, whether that's gonna be four or five miles, possibly more, possibly spend all day out. I'm not gonna be talking about any overnight trips today. So what do you need to have to make a good day hike or possibly a good time out on the trail? If you're gonna be doing, let's say, a mile or less with the kids, as far as clothing goes, um, I would say pretty much wear whatever you want that's gonna be comfortable for the weather. Um, I would just make sure that you have some good shoes and I'll get into the shoes in a little bit. If you're gonna be doing, let's say, four to five miles um, or an all day hike, you really wanna make sure you have the appropriate clothing. I do not suggest hiking in jeans. I have done it before and let me tell you, um, one or two miles, you might be fine, but if you're doing an all day hike, there are several problems with hiking in jeans um, and even a cotton t-shirt. So the first problem with hiking in jeans is, number one, after a while they get uncomfortable. You are gonna have chafing on your inner thighs, your back buttocks area, back of your thighs like you would not believe. That was actually a fish that swam up on shore. Huh, okay, so you're gonna have um, chafing like you would not believe. I have come back and literally looked like Hamburg. So I do not hike in jeans if I'm doing long hikes at all. What you wanna have is you wanna have a good, comfortable pair of hiking pants. These here are a little bit water resistant, but they're breathable, they're moisture wicking. These actually have SPF 50 to keep you from the sun's harmful UV rays. I can actually unzip these and turn them into shorts if I get warm. Other types are just your basic uh, breathable um, canvas types hiking pants. And I really suggest something that's a little bit loose, has articulating knees, which means they're a little bit stretchy in the knees, a little bit stretchy in the buttocks area. And for you guys, you know what I'm gonna talk about. You want something with a gusseted crotch to give you a little bit of room. Uh, Cause you know, if you're wearing jeans, things can get pinched or, you know, pants that are too tight, things can get uh, pinched and you're not gonna be comfortable and that can actually hurt. So a good pair of hiking pants. Shirts, I suggest wearing something of a nylon or a polyester blend that's breathable. Now today it's about 70 degrees, it's a little bit warmer than um, what I was actually expecting hiking in here, but this here is thin as a t-shirt. So um, it's breathable, again, it's SPF 50. I can roll the uh, sleeves up on it, it's moisture wicking. You wanna stay away from cotton as much as possible and the reason behind that is cotton will hold your sweat so after a while, it's gonna get wet. Uh, cotton can chafe, it's gonna to get totally uncomfortable. And if you get cotton wet, it's not gonna dry as fast. Plus, it's not gonna keep you warm. It actually traps in the coldness. So that's pretty much um, as far as the outerwear as keeping comfortable. Um, didn't get into underwear. There's many types of underwear. 
Again, you want to wear something that especially guys are going to be comfortable and not pinch certain areas and not cause chafing. Um, it all really depends on your skin. Next, I'm going to get into shoes. What I'm wearing today is a hiking trail walker. Some people like to hike in boots. Some people like to, um, actually some people like to go barefoot and feel the soil on their feet. I'm not one of those type of people. I've seen people wear hiking sandals. Um, to me, I'm not crazy about those either because they don't provide enough foot protection. Um, hiking boots can be okay. Um, and they're really great in the fall time or early spring. My problem with hiking boots is as I'm older, they do not provide enough padding in the sole for a long trip. My feet actually start hurting. Plus, um, with me, even though I wear tall socks sometimes, you know, once they get up in the calf area, they start causing rubbing and chafing. Me, I like what's known as a good um, trail runner or hiking shoe. This particular one, I'm not going to mention any brand names today, but this particular one is almost like a boot. So what do you want to look for in your shoes? So first of all, this one right here provides a little bit of protection on the side that if I do hit a rock or root, I'm not really going to feel it. It's hard plastic. Also, these here are semi waterproof or water resistant. So if I do happen to get in a little bit of water, I am not going to get my feet totally wet unless I actually go over it or into um, some of the canvas area. But most of the sides are actually water resistant. What you want to look for in a shoe is something with good grip. Now you can see mine have a little bit of mud in it. I wore these out on a trail yesterday where a lot of the um, rocks that I had to cross were mossy and wet and slippery. This provided excellent traction. So you want to make sure something with good grip, something with a little bit of flex for when you walk and then your inside padding is very, very important. On the fit, you want to make sure they're not too snug around here that they provide some flex, um, but they're good fitting around here. And then your toes, you want to have at least half a um, thumbnail to a thumbnail print because especially when you're going downhill, you don't want to be jamming your toes into the edge of your shoe. That's how you uh, damage the end of your toes. Long term, you can get what's known as hammer toe where your toe stays bent. You can tear toenails. You want to make sure they tighten up around here pretty good. Um, and you don't really want too much slippage uh, because this is where you're going to get your blister area back in here. So if you can tighten them up around here to keep your foot from sliding back and forth, that is really excellent. When you're lacing up your shoes, I always go for the two finger rule where once they're on, you should have two fingers as far as the width of the shoelace to show that it's good and snug. Okay, so next I want to talk about socks. Socks are very important for your feet. You always want to take care of your feet out on the trail. Sometimes I carry an extra pair of socks with me uh, to, just in case um, I get wet. Now, these right here are your average athletic sock that you can get at Walmart, Kmart, um, other stores. These are cotton. I do not like these for hiking. Um, first of all, they're very thin. They're not going to provide the padding on your feet. They get wet. They are totally miserable once they're wet. You can see on the inside here, if the camera is going to pick this up, about how rough this material is. This will actually cause chafing on your feet. You do not want your feet getting all chafed up. This is also, again, how your blisters happen. So. They might be good for around town, but even working out, I do not suggest a um, athletic sock like this. The socks that I actually suggest are made out of merino wool. When I say wool, a lot of you are going to get turned off because you remember the old wool of the 1970s that smelled. They had like a smell to them. They were itchy, scratchy. Um, they made you sweat. 
Today's wool is very different. There's a product out that's called Merino wool. It's one of the best things actually made for hiking. Now, they make some different um, style socks in the Merino wool. Some are thicker than others, depending on the type of season that you're hiking in. I have uh, three different pairs in front of me right here. Uh, one of the ones is the Darn Tough sock. Now, again, I'm not really um, talking about any specific brands. I'm not sponsored by anybody. I, um, nobody sent these to me. I bought these with my own money. But the different type of socks out there is you got the Darn Tough socks, which are merino wool that um, are guaranteed for life. If you wear them out, you can send them back to the company and they'll send you a new pair free if you get any holes in them. Darn Toughs, what I like about those is they're actually made in Vermont. So they're USA made product. This one here is a little bit thinner. This is called a Farm to Feet. Again, it's merino wool. And with these here, um, they're made in the USA of USA materials. Doesn't actually say where they're made. I would have to actually um, look it up, but these are made in the USA. And then you got your standard old Dr. Shoals. Um, which these, I think Dr. Shoals may actually be made in China. But what you can see on the merino wool ones is they're actually thicker. So they're going to provide you with more padding. Now, this is the Darn Tough. Um, I left the farm to feet ones there because it's of the basic same material type. Um, also the same thickness as these. L.L. Bean also has what's known as their um, Katahdin, named after the endpoint of the Appalachian Trail. They have their merino wool socks, but as you can see, they're substantially thicker, but they do breathe. If these get wet, now these are moisture wicking, um, so if your feet sweat, the moisture will be taken away from them, but these are moisture wicking for that, so you don't really get that smell. You don't get the sweatness, um, but if they do get wet, they will take longer to dry than cotton, but merino wool will keep the warmth, so if you're on a cool day, your feet are not going to get cold because they're wet. Nice thing I like about merino wool is if you see the inside, you can see that it's actually much smoother. This is not going to chafe your feet at all. So it's gonna provide more comfort. They're a little bit thicker. It's gonna provide that extra padding that you need. And it's gonna reduce against blisters. Um, these Dr. Scholl ones I have are actually winter socks. Again, nice and smooth on the inside. Very thick, again, for um, providing padding, comfort, and warmth. So you wanna make sure that you have a real good pair of socks. While I'm still on the subject of outerwear, as the weather starts getting cooler, uh, a lot of you are going to like wearing either fleeces or hoodies, uh, especially as you get up into the higher elevations. Now, I can tell you higher elevation, it will get cooler. Um, I went to Mount Washington one time and we actually drove up. We didn't hike up because uh, I was with my wife. Down in the valley, it was about 70, 75 degrees. When we got on top of Mount Washington, it was actually 28 degrees with snow flurries and very cloudy. So the higher up you go, the colder it's gonna get. Um, if it, it may be beautiful sunny, if one cloud comes through, the weather can change like that. It's gonna get misty, the temperature's gonna drop. So a lot of people like wearing hoodies to keep warm in the fall, which are great if you're down in the valley around your car. To me, I might want to suggest something a little bit different because you never know if the weather is going to change. In my backpack here, which I carry with me on um, days that I think it's going to rain or if I'm going up in a higher elevation, is actually a lightweight rain jacket with a hood. Nice thing about a lightweight rain jacket is number one if it starts misting or if it starts raining or downpour it's actually going to keep you dry and if you put the hood on the other thing that's great about this and it's, i'm actually starting to get warm now um like a hoodie this is going to keep you 
just as warm or if not warmer than a hoodie and the reason being is this material really does not breathe so it's going to trap in your your body heat to provide that warmth for you um, also it's going to give wind resistant and with a hoodie being either cotton or polyester the wind's going to go right through it if you get a breeze whereas this is wind resistant so you're not gonna actually feel the breeze so i suggest carrying a light rain jacket sometimes over a hoodie the other thing um, you might want to consider especially if you're on any type of hike at all and you have kids it's going to be your basic first aid kit and this is just a little um, day pack first aid kit cost me less than ten dollars you don't have to get something totally fancy and the reason behind that is you are not going to be providing aid for any trauma at all if you get hurt or if you've come across somebody hurt on the trail the most you're going to do is provide basic aid until help arrives especially if you have young kids with you i suggest a basic first aid kit because kids will take off running they'll fall they're going to skin their knees they're going to get minor cuts might get into a thorn bush and uh, get a scrape so in this basic kit right here that costs less than ten dollars i actually picked this one up at my local walmart but they have them uh, cvs walgreens various outdoor stores and this one here actually contains quite a bit for ten dollars it's got two butterfly closures two uh three quarter inch by three inch strips three strips that are one inch by three inch two fingertip two knuckle strip and that's under the adhesive bandage under your gauze items you've got um four yards of two inch gauze you got two two by two inch by two inch gauze pads and one three inch by three inch gauze pad this one actually contains medication so you might want to be a little bit leery on expiration dates um one in acid um if you're older like me or if you just come back from a restaurant having an acid with you is great one aspirin um now there's actually two per package but there's only one packet when i say one um so one aspirin aspirin can be great if you're older like me i've had some health issues in the past um, so i always carry aspirin if somebody's having chest pains first thing you want to do is give them two aspirins because you never know if they're having a heart attack and that's going to help them until help actually arises and hopefully that is not a yellow jacket nest at my feet by the camera uh might be just scouting around. We've had two tropical storms come through, so the yellow jackets are really out. Um, also, you got two ibuprofen to help with pain. Same thing with um, acetaminophen and one allergy relief packet. Now, allergy relief, I, I'm going to go into um, the medication that I carry with me in a little bit. I always carry Benadryl with me, and I've learned this from living in Florida you never know where you're going to brush up against a plant you're going to get an insect bike or just something in the air is going to set off your allergies and even with a bee sting because it's fast acting um, can actually be a lifesaver so i suggest carrying benadryl if you're not allergic to it also this one here under topical treatments it has two antiseptic towelettes um, which I'm going to get into something else in a minute. It has two triple antibiotic ointments, two sting relief wipes. So if you get um, stung by a bee, like there was just a yellow jacket that was around here. Luckily he left, um, or she. So if you do get stung, this will help you uh, with some of the pain. Other items, a lot of hikers um, actually swear by moleskin. So this has a three inch by four inch moleskin, which can be great on your blisters. It has one tape, um, 2.5 yards of a half inch tape. Uh, tape can be great for wrapping gauze, holding things into place, putting over blisters. Um, it has scissors for cutting your gauze. One splinter out. Uh, you never know if you rub your hand on a railing or get a splinter somewhere. And this one actually also has a 
quick guide for administering first aid so as far as what to do in an emergency so those are some of the basic items i suggest for a day hike i uh, also suggest a some type of cap um, to keep the sun out of your face occasionally you'll see me wearing this hat right here this is mostly my fishing hat um, it has a wide brim on it to keep the sun off my face breathable top but it also has these flaps that come down in the back to keep the sun off my neck you can use a uh, neck buff or a uh, bandana also because you really don't want to get sunburned this hat here looks a little funny my wife laughs at it but i mean it's great if i can get down here where you can see me you know i got the sun protection I got the flap on the back of the neck. So you're gonna need something to carry this in, uh, especially when you're hiking, you're gonna take off layers um, that you're gonna to wanna to put away, you're gonna to wanna to put layers on. So I suggest a good basic backpack. Now I'm gonna take these off for a minute. Um, these are flip-flops. I actually brought these today in case I might wanna go swimming, but some people like to take off their shoes, get their feet a rest, and uh, actually, you know, while they're taking a break, put on flip-flops. But to carry your items, I suggest a good basic backpack. Now, if you're gonna be out with the family doing less than um, a mile, a book bag backpack might work. Uh, anything more than that, I suggest something good. This is my old reliable one which actually i'm getting ready to retire because a lot of the straps on it, i've had this thing for about six to eight years and a lot of the straps on it have stretched so much that it's not fitting me properly anymore so it's only really good in the winter time when i'm wearing heavier clothing but you're going to want something that you know has ample pockets for carrying and this is where i'm going to get into the next set of items when you get into a longer hike so having something that has a water bottle on the side, you always want to have water with you because uh, you will get thirsty. I am not a fan of these plastic water bottles. I see so many of these on the trail. I, actually, it irritates me how many of these I see just dumped on the trail, stuffed into trees, stuffed into rocks, stuffed on top of sticks. I prefer something reusable. Uh, like a Nalgene bottle or some sort of thermos. Now, to me, I am not a fan of the reusable aluminum ones that clip on your backpack. I found they rattle and they swing around. Plus, a lot of them give off a metal taste. And unless you're making coffee or putting some sort of flavoring in there, uh, I don't like it. A plastic Nalgene bottle, you know, you're not going to leave that out in the woods because they cost a lot of money. And these things here... I am so sick of seeing these on the trail. But you always want to make sure that you have water with you. I do not suggest soda um, because of the fact of the carbonation. You're going to get cramps, especially out on a long um, hike. Some of you might to bring little stoves to make coffee. That's fine. But yeah, plenty of water to get you through the day and the people you're going to be with. Um, you pack, you want to make sure that you have a lot of pockets for organization um, to put, you know, different things that you can get at quickly. You want a bigger inner pocket for your clothing to go into as you take it off and on. So let's get into some of the items that I actually have on my pack for a longer hike. And by a longer hike, I am talking about, again, four miles or possibly something all day. Okay, so we started talking about your um, backpack where, you know, I like something that has a lot of pockets for organization, place to put my clothes. I got a place to put my trekking, clo um, trekking poles. I've got a place for my water bottle. On the front of my pack, um, I actually have my knife secure to it. This is my diving knife, actually. Usually you'll see me carrying a four to five inch hunting knife on my side, um, but unfortunately the sheath on it actually broke where the belt loop is. Uh, so I gotta take it to a leather smith and see if I can get that fixed. But 
I always like to carry some sort of knife with me. Uh, this can be good for chopping up your snacks. It can be good for processing kidling and firewood if you're out overnight. Uh, for example, <clears throat> just take this stick. I can, you know, shave down some uh, kidling. Can be good for self-defense. I've never run into any wildlife, um, except for once I did come across a fox, but he was kind of far off and he scooted away. I've never run into any coyotes, bears, bobcats, or foxes that I actually had to worry about. Now, my friend did have a coyote attack his dog in his backyard. Um, but he found out, yeah, you don't want to mess with a uh, main cattle and uh, coon dog mix. Um, that coyote learned the lesson, but I've never had to use this, but you know, it's great to have with you. A lot of people, um, they will shy away from you if you actually have some sort of knife that's visible on you. And now some people actually have their license to carry, which um, can go both ways on that. That's not a discussion for this video, but you know, I carry camera gear with me and you know, because they see a visible knife, a lot of people just don't even, they'll come up to me and talk to me, but you know, they'll, if they were thinking of something, they'll think twice. But mostly I carry this for, you know, if I need any protection against any animals or if I want to have a fire and process firewood or um, cut up my snack. Sometimes I carry a compass with me. I'm actually looking for a new compass. A lot of them are not reliable. Uh, sometimes having a printed map is good to have with you uh, because unfortunately you get into areas where you don't have um, good cell phone signals. So the GPS on your cell phone may not work. Um, all trails, you can actually download the map to your phone so that you can have it offline. Um, but I like using the GPS on the oil trails to tell me exactly where I am and how much time I have to get out of the woods. But if you're just going out for a basic hike, stick it to the main trail, that's something that you may or may not need. Um, some of your weather apps. If you're going to be doing a long day hike uh, into the backcountry, I might suggest something like um, a Garmin InReach Mini or one of the other type of satellite communications. The only problem with those is like where I'm sitting, um, I have a lot of trees overhead, so there's a uh, canopy. I would probably have to go stand down by the rock where it's more open because um, you want to have a clear overhead so that you can see the satellites. So again, in a backpack, something with adjustable straps so that it can tighten up on you. So you want something also that has a sternum strap to tighten up around here because you don't want your backpack pulling back on you, causing pressure on your shoulders and back. And also, I like to have one that has a waist belt. Um, this way here, it actually puts the weight of my pack on my hips uh, this way here you know it's not pulling back on me it's not pulling down on my shoulders it's distributed like it should so now i'm going to get into some of the contents that are actually in my pack a lot of this like i said is mostly for a longer hike and possibly an all-day hike first we're going to talk about trekking poles a lot of people are actually on the fence when it comes to trekking poles. Um, some say they're useless, some say they're great. I've actually started carrying trekking poles with me and that was mostly after meeting up with somebody on the trail who said that the trail that I was going under, uh, the trail that I was going on actually was very muddy, very rocky, and he really suggested it. I've used these trekking poles probably about three or four times, and I will tell you, um, a lot of the trails that I hike are wide open, they're flat, and they're not many, many rocks, so it mostly just sits in my back. I've come across areas that were so very rocky. Um, they had a lot of roots, a lot of the rocks were loose, 
And let me tell you, a trekking, trekking poles will help you keep your balance, um, keep you from turning an ankle, which you really do not want to do out in the woods. You spray an ankle out in the woods and trying to get back is not fun. So these are great. Um, this particular one here has a rubber footing for if I was actually to be like on a road or something, I can take this off, have the uh, spikes for mud or for um, ice. And let me tell you, in the winter time, you want trekking poles because slipping on ice is not fun. Um, the other thing trekking poles will do for you um, is if you're doing any stream crossing, some of your rocks are gonna be covered with moss. They're gonna be very slippery. This can actually help you with your footing so that you know you actually put it down on the on the river bottom and as you walk in you can maintain your balance. You want to make sure you have a good adjustable one. Now I suggest the one with the snap style clips because they're quick to release and adjust. Plus also they have a screw um, where if these clips get loose I can tighten them up. I'm going to do a whole video about using trekking poles and the proper way to use them. But basically, in short, not only providing um, stable footing for rocks, roots, and crossing rivers, they also help save your knees. Now, somebody who's older like me, that's actually a good thing um, because, you know, our knees wear out fast when we get older if they're not already worn out. So the good thing about that is as you're hiking along, you know, it'll distribute your weight. You can actually use it on a hill to pull yourself up. Going downhill, you can use them as brakes, uh, especially if you're doing a uh, steep incline. So a couple things you want to look for in trekking poles, like I said, is um, good, adjustable, spring-loaded. Um, you want to look for ones... I've lost these rubber clips. Personally, I think they're useless, but you want to make sure they have a good spike, especially for mud, winter, and river bottoms. The handles on them, um, you want to make sure they have a good adjustable strap. I'll do a video on trekking poles about uh, the proper way to um, use your strap so that if you do take a fall, you're not going to break your thumb. The handle on your trekking pole, there are several different types. Now, this particular one here, as you can see, is plastic, but it does have holes to make it somewhat breathable, although it's plastic underneath. Some of them are solid plastic and some of them are cork. I will tell you that um, during the warmer days, anything that's plastic, your hands are going to sweat, which can ultimately make this more slippery. Cork will actually um, repel and absorb the sweat and give you a better grip. Uh, the only problem is you really want to be leery of the quality of the trucking pole that you get and that the cork does not actually start breaking off. But um, any basic one, I think I probably paid $20 um, at the most for these. These were you know just a basic set to try out to see if it was worth it other things i might carry in my pack so we're going to start out with the top pocket well actually let me start out with um, this pocket this pocket is great for quick access today i actually have a towel and um, my swimsuit i uh, thought maybe i was going to go swimming today but it feels like the air keeps changing uh, especially being in the shade. It's not really warm enough for swimming, although some people down at the beach um, on the other side of the lake are doing swimming. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna go swimming or not today. So top pocket, ready, readily available. This way here, when I take off my pack, I know exactly where it, is, where it is. In here, I have my keys. I always take everything out of my pockets when I'm hiking. Um, I'm on medication that causes bruising very easily and in one of my hikes I actually had my keys in my pocket and they just kept lightly bouncing. At the end of that hike I had a bruise this big on my leg. Plus not only that if you don't have anything in your pockets you're going to be much more comfortable. So um, got my keys. 
got my wallet. You always want to have some sort of identification on you. I've got extra paper towels, multiple use, uh, first aid um, for you ladies. You know what that's about. Hand sanitizer. Okay. Now, you may want to think, why am I carrying hand sanitizer out of the woods? Well, first of all, most everybody is carrying hand sanitizer anyway um, because of COVID. Hand sanitizer is great to have on a trail with you, especially if you're going to be risk of getting cuts and scrapes. I would carry this as part of my first aid kit. Because hand sanitizer is a gel, it's not going to spill or risk spilling like most other liquids. Now, hand sanitizer can be anywhere from 60 to 90% alcohol. It is an antiseptic. So, it's for use on hand uh, sanitizing your hands and reducing bacteria on skin. So, if I was to get a scrape, um, a cut, or even a sting, I might take a little bit of hand sanitizer and just put it over that area since... Um, it's alcohol based uh, just to prevent any bacteria getting in there. You probably want to be careful if there's any other ingredients in here like um, dyes or you know if it has that bluish color um, any dyes or any type of uh, scented ones or glitter ones that they sell at Bath and Body Works which is those probably about maybe one percent alcohol and 90 percent glitter they're actually useless just your basic good old hand sanitizer they sell at CVS also in this um, top pocket so hand sanitizer don't know why I have two in there Probably put one in there um, for today's video. I forgot I had one in there for yesterday's hike. Other thing I have readily available in here, um, I have asthma. So I have my inhaler in case I need it. And I also have a little bottle. Um, I actually got this in Michael's. It's good for, it's actually for storing used paint. But what I carry in here is essential to me, um, and you want to think about it if you're actually on prescription medications. In here, I carry Benadryl for anything that might cause an allergic reaction, either for me or somebody on the trail. Antacid, in case I have acid reflux acting up. Um, trust me, if you ever have severe acid reflux, you know how painful it can be. You can take your breath away. You can choke on it. Also, I carry aspirin in here because, like I said, um, I've had some past heart conditions. So if I feel any chest pains or chest discomfort, I will take a um, couple aspirins, you know, just in case. Um, even though I haven't had to in years I uh, still carry it with me check the expiration date something else you want to have with you in my next pocket and I, I actually have always want to keep uh, some sort of snack with you you don't know how long you're going to be out on the trail and especially with kids uh, you're burning a lot of calories so you will get hungry yesterday's video I did not take a snack with me I ended up being out longer than what I thought I was going to be out and I, I was actually hungry and uh, I could feel my blood sugar starting to uh, drop a little bit so you always want to make sure you have some sort of snack with you um, you know some people even pack a whole lunch um, especially if you're diabetic diabetics are going to um, worry about their blood sugar often so they always want to have something with them Next item I got in here, um, of course I've got spare batteries for my camera. You may want to take a uh, battery pack with you for your Garmin InReach Mini or your cell phone just in case you spend more time out on the trail than what you thought and it actually um, goes dead. Today's hike, I am literally only not even 10-15 uh, minutes from the car and I'm not going to be out here all day. For any hikes that you're going to be out starting out before sunlight or actually um, spending all day and there's a risk of coming back after sunset, I suggest a good headlamp. Now you can get the ones that are battery operated. This one here actually has to be a Petzl brand. This is one of the brightest ones you can buy. You don't have to go with something this extravagant, but I absolutely love this. 
and I don't take a lantern or a flashlight when I go camping because of the fact of this is so bright. This is 700 lumens. It will actually light up a whole camping area, but any good basic headlamp. And the reason why I suggest headlamps is, you know, you can put them on your hat and get the USB cable out of the way for a minute. You can put them on your hat. It keeps your hands free. Uh, this one here has several modes from low beam to very bright beam to flashing to SOS signal. As you see on this one, this one has a triple light. Uh, actually, it has two lights. So you got the low beam and I can adjust the brightness of it. Hold it down. You got the two. And I can just, like I said, this goes up to 700 lumens. It's also got a light sense mode that can adjust. I've never actually used that. This one here is USB rechargeable on a high brightness double beam, full 700 lumens. I can actually get three to four hours straight use out of this. And I like the fact that it's USB chargeable so that I can just charge it up the night before. The ones that take batteries, they're okay problem with batteries is I found the shelf life on batteries is not as great as um, the package indicates. Now the batteries will last longer than a USB charge depending on use. So that's a couple of things I'd like to keep in there. Moving on to the next pocket which is actually the main pocket of my backpack. Some of the things I've already talked about like the hat, the clothes, Bug spray, um, I'm not really a, too much a fan of bug spray. There are different types you can get. Uh, the lotions, the pump action, this happens to be the aerosol spray. Me who has asthma, I find um, sometimes this can actually affect my breathing and um, trigger my asthma. I've also have found times where this doesn't actually work. Um, truthfully, bug spray is good against mosquitoes and ticks. Up here in New England, we have those darn deer flies and the black flies. This does absolutely nothing against. So uh, that's where I prefer breathable long pants, long um, breathable t-shirt like shirt and uh, some type of hat. Um, I do have a full netting at home which i didn't bring today uh, which can be good if it gets really bad all right moving on to the next pocket so in my next pocket besides the you know the clothing and stuff um I always carry a roll of toilet paper and i really should have this in a bag or a case but um it's just in here for now uh yeah obvious reasons why you want to have a roll of toilet paper you never know when that's going to strike um especially um you know if you have ladies with you also good uh, emergency first aid kit also a good fire starter um which i'll get into fires in a little bit i do not carry rubber gloves with me i think they're overkill so i always carry a plastic bag um, one i can use it to keep things dry if uh it starts downpouring and I'm really worried about um, stuff in my backpack like my camera gear, my phone, or whatever. Um, I'm also a big fan of Leave No Trace. I try to pick up trash if I see it out on the trail. Now, um, I talked about in one of my trash videos about carrying one of those grippers that actually folds up um, for anything that might be gooey or disgusting, but um, yeah, carry out what you carry in your trash. I am so sick of seeing trash on trails. Now, I mentioned rubber gloves. I do not carry rubber gloves as part of my basic first aid kit. I might have them in my advanced kit in my car, um, but this can be good in an emergency also. Let's say you come across somebody who's bleeding a lot. This could actually be used as a mitten. You just put it over your hand, Kind of wrap this around, not too tight. Tuck the handles in or tie it. And then you got a basic mitten, you know, that you can apply 
pressure to a wound or whatever. This is getting more into survival tactics, but uh, you just never know while on the trail. So that could be great for that. Let's say somebody injured their hand really bad. You know, you can put a hand in there, um, keep ointment or a compress on there if they get burned or, or stung. Um, most of the time, you're not gonna have to use a uh, tourniquet, but you can use that as a basic tourniquet. And you ladies, you'll appreciate this one. Good old uh, rain cap. <laughs> So yeah, um, I keep a plastic bag with me. A couple of the other things I keep with me, I got an extra water bottle in there, which I'm not gonna take out right now. Going back to this pocket, if there's a chance where I might get lost or be out overnight, I will take some sort of fire starter with me. You can get your basic uh, flint and steel, uh, forget exactly what these are called, but you know, yeah. Now, this one here has a chain on, so it's a little hard. Let me switch over to this one, um, where you can throw a spark. The sparks in here come out like hundreds of degrees. This one here, I can actually shave off magnesium. If you want to start a fire, you just put your flint and steel down or one of these rods and... We just had a lot of rain, so this may not light. And this gets into my next point. So you can see where these can actually be more of a hassle, but they're good in an emergency. Uh, we just had a lot of rain, so oh, the problem with these are the fact that if any, if you've had a lot of rain, a lot of your leaves, grasses um, will not light because they just hold so much moisture and these really do take a lot of practice to use. And yeah, I'm just not getting a fire with, at all with these today. Like I said, they can be more of a hassle, but good in emergency use. So to me, I would like to, you know, I would spend 50 cents or more. You can go to Dollar Tree, get a whole pack of these. Just carry a basic uh, mini lighter of any type. This is Scripto, you know, much easier to uh, start a fire with. Make sure that's good and out. So yeah, I would carry a lighter. Fire is good um, for two reasons. If you get caught out overnight and you're lost, it could be a signal, it can provide warmth. Uh, you can use it to dry your clothes. Just make sure you check with the local area on um, any fire bans or whether or not it's legal to have a fire where you are. Um, a lot of areas out west right now are having problems with uh, wildfires because it's so dry, but in an emergency, if you lost, um, you know, I'm not sure, <laughs> you're probably not gonna get in trouble for having a fire, especially to uh, help with your survival and also um, help people locate you. And that's another thing, if you're lost, stay where you are. Um, some people carry whistles. I do not have one with me today on my hike. Um, a whistle can be heard for about a mile as opposed to shouting. Um, you're going to get hoarse really quick and a lot of people may not hear you shout. So, you know, whistle, basic emergency. The other thing is with a fire, let me mention this really quick. I mentioned about keeping warm and dry. A lot of people don't know this, but even during the summertime, you can get hypothermia if you're wet or if the temperature drops. So hypothermia is basically when your body temperature starts falling below that 98.6 or whatever your normal temperature is like me, I run, um, 
96 degrees most of the time. If your body's temperature starts dropping and you start shivering, you're at risk for hypothermia. Um, in the autumn time, you're gonna have nights getting down into the anywhere from the 30s to the 50s and more later towards autumn and winter, you're gonna start having nights in the 20s, even though your daytime highs might be 75, 80 degrees. So you really wanna be careful about hypothermia. Um, stay dry, stay warm. And again, um, I don't have an emergency blanket with me. Um, a lot of my hikes I do, that's overkill, you know, but if I, there was a risk that I might be caught out overnight, I might have an emergency blanket, but then again, you know, having a rain jacket is going to keep me dry. Yes, Ducky, I hear you. <laughs> so, yeah, um, cigarette lighter, cell phone, toilet paper, proper clothing, snack, um, proper shoes. That's pretty much the basics that are in my pack for a successful all day hike. Um, like I said, I did not get into any of the overnight. Um, <laughs> yes, Ducky, I know I'm in your area. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna talk about water for a minute. Um, like I said, I'm not a fan of these. You know, make sure you know, have enough hydration with you, Nalgene bottles. Some people um, will drink out of the rivers and lakes. I suggest having a good uh, filtration, like um, having a good filtration, like a life straw, um, a Sawyer filter, um, or some type of purification. Uh, some people say, you know, two drops of bleach per gallon or liter, let it sit for 20 minutes. Um, I'm not really sure about that. Your town water is actually treated with chlorine, so it's basically the same thing. If you're gonna go that route, I would say, first of all, do not um, get any of the scented ones because of the chemicals that are in it. Um, Second of all, it is gonna give it a chlorine nasty taste. Same thing with the um, iodine tablets that you can buy. They're great in emergency. I prefer filters. I actually have one that's actually a uh, purification um, that will treat any water at all. Um, now, the reason why you want some sort of filter or purifier is they talk about beaver fever um, and other cysts and bacteria, and really you do not want a stomach ailment uh, from it. You know, you never know what's in the water. People peeing upstream. Um, you got Mr. Ducky who keeps quacking at me over here. <laughs> um, you know, fish bacteria, microplastics, various cysts, um, other algae or whatever. So. I'm going to do a video on water treatment in the future, um, but basically in short, um, some type of cloth or a bandana to actually filter from one container to another to get all the sediment out and then your uh, filtration. The reason why you want to use a bandana is it actually makes your filters last longer. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, boiling water. Boiling water is okay, but um, it's not going to take care of any sediment. So that's why you want to have some sort of filter, a bandana, a life straw, or whatever, and then you can boil on top of it to be safe. So I pretty much covered everything, you know, basic needs for a good day hike, um, you know, a few miles to actually getting out all day. So. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments um, down below. I'll try to answer them. There's many YouTube videos out there, but I figured I would just come out, do a basic video, um, since a lot of us are going to be hitting the trail shortly, getting out and enjoying the uh, fall weather and the leaves that are soon going to be changing. Some of them are actually already starting to change. So, you know, I hope you like this video. If you do, press the thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments down below. I'll try to answer any questions for you. 
that I can or I might um, point you to another YouTube video and really just get outdoors have fun um, there's so much to see you know just going away from your car you know just anywhere from a quarter mile to uh, four miles or even an all-day hike uh, a lot of stuff you're just not going to see from the roadway get out enjoy this country was meant for us to enjoy god gave us great scenery get out and enjoy oh one other important feature or item if you have pets right here poopy bags okay even the plastic bag that i have in there pick up your dog's number two crap poop whatever you want to call it it's not going to be fun for the next person to step in it now first of all it leaves bacteria um, a lot of people will get turned off report it they'll close down trails they'll not allow you to take your dogs a lot of us like hunting a lot of us like hiking with our dogs either for the companionship or safety so pick up your dog's crap poopy bags will keep it clean conceal the smell you can put it in a trash bag like i have and make sure you take these off the trail with you uh, not only that in the fall leaves are going to start falling so le leaves could fall on top of your dog's uh, poop and Somebody's gonna end up stepping in it, and I do not like to go home with dog poop on my shoes or clean it off. I've known people I actually throw away their shoes. They won't even clean. They won't even clean it. Step in dog poop. That's it. Throw it away. I don't have that type of money. But anyway, pick up your dog's crap. There is nothing worse than I go to a park, uh, trail, whatever, and I am dodging little puppy landmines. So pick up your dog's poop. All right, so I'm going to end this video today. I'm just going to go ahead, pack all this back up, eat my snack before I head out. And then uh, we'll see you in the next video. Get out there and en enjoy it. Fall's coming. Beautiful scenery about to explode in the next few weeks. So get out there, enjoy, have a great time. And I'll see you on my next adventure.